Our museums are filled with giant skeletons of dinosaurs and ice age animals that dwarf the modern day species. It can come as a surprise therefore that there were many tiny reptiles, amphibians and mammals living alongside the T-Rex and Triceratops. These included some of the tiniest species to ever walk the earth which are also absolutely unique. So meet some of the smallest prehistoric dinosaurs, amphibians and mammals. With its feathers and four primitive wings, one pair each on its forearms and hind legs, the early Cretaceous Microraptor might easily have been mistaken for a bizarrely mutated pigeon. This was however a genuine raptor in the same family as the Velociraptor. It only measured about 2 feet from head to tail and weighed only a few pounds. Befitting its tiny size, paleontologists believe that the Microraptor survived on a diet of insects. Sharks have a deep evolutionary history, predating mammals, dinosaurs and pretty much all terrestrial vertebrates. To date, the smallest identified prehistoric shark is Falcatus, a tiny bug-eyed menace, the males of which were equipped with sharp spines jutting out of their heads, which seem to have been used rather painfully for mating purposes. Needless to say, Falcatus was a far cry from true undersea giants like Megalodon, which is preceded by a whopping 300 million years. The king of dinosaurs, Tyrannosaurus rex, measured 40 feet from head to tail and weighed around 8 tons. But its fellow Tyrannosaur, Dylong, which lived over 60 million years earlier, weighed only 25 pounds. An object lesson in how plus size creatures tend to evolve from small ancestors. Even more remarkably, the eastern Asian Dylong was covered in feathers, a hint that even the mighty T rex may have had feathers at some stage of its life cycle. Believe it or not, shortly after they evolved hundreds of millions of years ago, amphibians were the largest land-dwelling animals on earth, until their pride of place was taken over by even bigger prehistoric reptiles. One of the smallest amphibians yet identified, a mere tadpole compared to giants like Mastodon Saurus was Triadobatracus, the triple frog, which inhabited the swamps of Madagascar during the early Triassic period and likely lay at the root of the frog and toad evolutionary tree. When most people think of sauropods, they picture gigantic plant eaters like Argentinosaurus, Diplodocus, and Patagotitan Maerum, some of which approached 100 tons in weight and stretched 50 yards from head to tail. Europasaurus, though, wasn't much bigger than a modern ox, only about 10 feet long and around 2,000 pounds. The explanation is that this late Jurassic dinosaur lived on a small island cut off from the European mainland, like its equally tiny titanosaur cousin, Megarosaurus. As with many other animals on this list, it's not a straightforward matter to identify the smallest prehistoric primate. After all, the vast majority of Mesozoic and early Cenozoic mammals were mouse-sized. Archosaurus, though, is as good a choice as any. This tiny tree-dwelling primate only weighed a few ounces, and it seems to have been ancestral to modern apes, monkeys, lemurs, and humans, though some paleontologists disagree. The three-pound Aculops was a true outlier of the Ceratopsian family tree. Whereas most ancestral horned and frail dinosaurs hailed from Asia, Aculops was discovered in North America in sediments dating to the Middle Cretaceous period about 110 million years ago. You may not know this, but the descendants of Aculops millions of years down the line were multi-ton plant eaters like Triceratops and Styracosaurus that could easily, successfully fend off an attack by a hungry T-Rex. The evolutionary lineage of modern canines go back 40 million years, including both plus-sized breeds like Porophagus and the Dire Wolf, and comparatively small genera like Leptosan, the Slender Dog. The amazing thing about the 5-pound Leptosan is that the various species of this canid persisted for about 25 million years, making it one of the most successful predatory animals of the Oligocene and Miocene North America. You couldn't ask for a better name for a tiny dinosaur than Minimi, even if this early Cretaceous ankylosaur was named after Australia's Minimi Crossing and not the infamous Minimi from the Austin Powers movies. The 500 pound Minimi may not seem especially small until you compare it to later multi ton ankylosaurs like Ankylosaurus and Eoprocephalus, its more famous descendants. It also had tiny brain judging by the tiny size of its brain cavity.
For every Australian behemoth like the giant wombat or the giant sword-faced kangaroo, there were a bewildering variety of tiny pouched mammals. While there is no consensus as to which was the smallest, one good possibility is the big-footed bandicoot, a long-nosed, spindly-legged two-ounce farval that hopped across the plains of Australia until the modern era, when it was crowded out by the arrival of European settlers and their pets. The 800-pound Tethysaurus was a fraction of the size of most hadrosaurs or duck-billed dinosaurs, which usually weighed 2 or 3 tons. This was due to insular dwarfism, that is, tendency of large animals confined to island habitats to evolve to modest proportions, a phenomenon attributed to adaptation to resource-poor environments and selection for early maturation and reproduction. On an unrelated note, Tethysaurus is only the second dinosaur ever to be discovered in modern-day Italy, much of which was submerged under the Tethys Sea during the late Cretaceous period. Pound for pound, the birds of the Cretaceous period weren't any bigger than their modern counterparts, for the simple reason that a dinosaur-sized pigeon would immediately plummet out of the sky. Even by this standard though, Iberomesornis was unusually small, only about the size of a finch or sparrow, and you'd have to take a close look at this bird to discern its basal anatomy including a single claw on each wing and a set of jagged teeth embedded in its tiny jaws. Since many ornithopods, the two-legged plant-eating dinosaurs ancestral to hadrosaurs were slight in stature, it can be a tricky matter to identify the smallest member of the breed. But a good candidate would be the 25-pound Gasparinosaura, one of the few ornithopods to have lived in South America where either scant plant life or the existence of predator-prey relationships downscaled its body plan. By the way, Gasparinosaura is also one of the few dinosaurs to be named after the female of the species. Just like some dinosaur species, many mammals developed in isolated circumstances during the Cenozoic era. What we call the dwarf elephant included scaled-down quarter-ton species of mammoths, mastodons, and modern elephants all of which lived on various Mediterranean islands during the Pleistocene epoch. Yet another insular dinosaur was the Megarosaurus, classified as a titanosaur, the family of lightly armored sauropods best represented by 100-ton monsters like Argentinosaurus and Patagotitan Mayor. Because it was restricted to an island habitat though, Megarosaurus weighed only a single ton. Some paleontologists believe this titanosaur plunged its snake under the surface of swamps and fed on aquatic vegetation. In February of 2008, paleontologists in China discovered the type fossil of Nemicolapterus, the tiniest flying reptile yet identified, with a wingspan of only 10 inches and a weight of a few ounces. Oddly enough, this pigeon-sized pterosaur may have occupied the same branch of evolution that gave rise to the enormous Quetzalcoatlus 50 million years later. A few million years after the Permian-Triassic extinction, the deadliest mass extinction in the history of life on Earth, marine life had yet to fully recover. A survivor of this period was Cartorhynchus, an ichthyosaur or a fish lizard that only weighed about 5 pounds but was still one of the largest marine reptiles of the early Triassic period. You wouldn't have known to look at it, but the descendants of Cartorhynchus millions of years down the line included the enormous 30-ton ichthyosaur Sonisaurus. Crocodiles which evolved from the same archosaurs that spawned the dinosaurs were thick on the ground during the Mesozoic era, making it difficult to identify the smallest member of the breed. But a good candidate would be Bernisarcia, an early Cretaceous crocodile about the size of a house cat. As tiny as it was, Bernisarcia sported all classic crocodilian features, narrow snout, knobby armor, etc., making it look like a scaled-down version of later behemoths like Sarcosuchus. As a general rule, the mammals of the Mesozoic era were some of the smallest vertebrates on Earth, the better to keep out the way of the giant dinosaurs, pterosaurs, and crocodiles with which they shared their habitat. Not only was the early Jurassic Hadrocodium incredibly tiny, only about an inch long and 2 grams, but it's represented in the fossil record by a single exquisitely preserved skull, which hints ironically at a bigger than usual brain compared to the size of its body. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.